A high school student's addiction. Cocaine and ecstasy, all different types of pills. We'd crush and snort and we were smoking. It was partying every weekend. Has deadly consequences. He thought I was dead and he leaves me in an abandoned apartment. I laid there for three days. Find out what brought her back to life. I was feeling um, just a supernatural peace that I never experienced before. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, coming up, a teenager overdoses on drugs and is abandoned for three days. The doctors, I remember them doing tests on me and walking in the room and saying, we have no clue how you are alive. You have more drugs in your system than what you kill three grown men. You are a walking dead woman. Stay with us and hear how her dramatic story gave her a second chance. Her life was changed. Stay with us. Well, like many teenagers, Heather Schott came from a broken home. And like many teenagers, Heather struggled handling the hurt. So she turned to the one thing she felt would bring comfort, drugs. Little did she know how much more pain would soon be introduced into her life. Me and a group of friends, we were out, we were going from party to party, and we were doing drugs in the car before going into the parties and then drinking at the parties. Um, I started foaming at the mouth. And the last thing I remember, he says to me, Heather, are you okay? And that's when I blacked out. My parents divorced when I was two years old. All I really knew is Daddy hated mom, mom hated daddy, and I was hearing from both sides of the reasons for why they disliked each other. It put a lot of bitterness or frustration in my heart towards my parents at a pretty young age. My mom was remarried um, when I was about four and a half, five years old. When my mom married my stepdad, they really began to strongly put their faith in the Lord and planting themselves in church. I knew who God was. I knew about the Bible. I knew stories in the Bible, but I wouldn't say that I really had a strong um, relationship, which is so key with God. From the viewpoint of a kid, my dad was just the funnest dad ever. I stayed out as late as I wanted. I went out with who I wanted. If I didn't want to come home at night, I didn't come home. If I wanted to drink, I could drink. If I wanted to smoke, I could smoke. Going into high school, I just became out of control for my mom and my stepdad to handle. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm moving in with my dad. And that really just led into all different types of drugs, cocaine and ecstasy, all different types of pills. We'd crush and snort and we were smoking. It was partying every weekend. And I just began to kind of flush out any good influences in my life, from family members to friends to church, everything I began to flush out. And emotionally, I was broken. I was just an angry, angry, hurt person. And all of those things started to brew a lot of insecurities. One night, um, me and a group of friends, we were out, we were going from party to party, and we were doing drugs in the car um, before going into the parties and then drinking at the parties. And one of my good friends, he had um, a big bag of ecstasy. He runs it over. There it is, crushed to powder, this huge bag. So we're like, whatever, we're just gonna snort it tonight. We're just gonna have this awesome best night of our lives. So he just starts feeding us all lines, line after line. And the last thing I remember is my best friend who was also with us that night, he says to me, Heather, are you okay? And that's when I blacked out. I started foaming at the mouth. The guy had been feeding me the lines that night. He freaked out. He thought I was dead and he leaves me in an abandoned apartment. Nobody's living in the complex and just leaves me on the floor of one of the bedrooms. I laid there for three days, no recollection of any of that time, no consciousness, nothing. My best friend confronted that guy who'd fed me those pills and said, you need to show me where Heather is at, you know, in a pretty strong confrontation. They had both thought I was dead and the door was just cracked. And when I heard them, I moved a little bit and he saw me move and he came in and he picked me up off the floor. They rushed me home to my dad. And that was the first time I started waking up after those um, three days. The doctors, I remember them doing tests on me and walking in the room and saying, we have no clue how you are alive. You have more drugs in your system than what you kill three grown men. You are a walking dead woman. And I remember just breaking, crying, because I knew I should have, I should have been dead. Um, and so it was, it was a moment of a little bit of me awakening, you know, and questioning what am I doing? 
My mom had、um, the police come pull me out of my dad's house, and so she wasn't giving up on the fight either for me. And so some of the rules of now being at home was I had to start attending church with them again. Whether or not I wanted to admit it, it felt good. And so、um, my heart, I would just say, it just began to slowly soften. Relationship with God, that was a big thing that changed for me. Not just attending church, I was feeling.、Um, Just a supernatural peace that I never experienced before, and ultimately, that was what won won my heart over was that just loving, peaceful presence of God. The Lord, He delivered me of drugs. He delivered me from alcohol. He delivered me from stealing. He delivered me from these intense, you know, addictions that I had that took a couple of years. It gets easier. There's hard moments in that process. There's harder days than others. Um, and part of my accountability was、um, my husband, who I had met. My mom had introduced us only three months、um, after my OD. We went on our first date, and I told him everything. I thought he was going to get up and leave the table when he heard everything I'd ever done. Coming from a person who never drank, never done drugs, was a virgin, listened to all of my junk, and was just filled with compassion. We started dating after that. We just fell so in love, and he really introduced me to the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful that that God's grace honestly gave me that second chance, gave me an incredible husband, and I get to do what I do now. You need to know that when you when you receive Christ into your life, you don't have to hold your head down low, ashamed of the mistakes that you made. Whether it's child out of wedlock, whether it's divorce, whatever it is, there's so many things that people carry around forever and let them eat up、um, their life instead of living in the fullness of what God intended. The reason why He wants to save us and deliver us is to use us. So as long as we allow that shame, those scars, those things to hold us up, it prevents the purpose of why He wants to save us, why He wants to deliver us, why He wants to redeem us. You are unscarred. You are made new when you receive Jesus into your life. He fully makes you new. It doesn't mean that I forget my past because I want to forever be grateful, but I'm not held to that. That's not who I am. I'm made new. Heather's story reminds us of the lengths we will go to escape, the lengths we will go to find satisfaction and things apart from God. It also reminds us of the lengths God will go to rescue us. So here she is, three days stoned, strung out in an abandoned building. That's hopelessness. That is darkness. That is loneliness. How does one recover from that? By surrendering to Jesus Christ. Not just trying to stop using, not just trying to walk away from the addiction. I don't know what it is in your life. Is it alcohol, drugs, pornography? Who knows what the addiction is, the burden, the weight holding you down? And maybe you've tried to stop doing this addiction. Maybe it's prescription drugs. Something has you. But you see that story and you say, "Wow, there's hope. There's hope because surrendering to Jesus." Does something unique. You're not just stopping or trying to stop your addictive behavior. You're chasing after something else. You're taking Jesus by the hand and saying, "I may not understand everything about this gospel, everything about how you want to change my life, but you love me. And if I turn my life over to you, I'm going to trust you're going to do something wonderful with it. If you're burdened today with an addiction," Or do not know the love of Jesus Christ. Let this be the day. Let this be a life-changing moment. Pray with me now. Father, I see the story. I see the hopelessness that this young woman was experiencing, and then this amazing turnaround, where now she's singing your praises, talking of your good works, your good ways, and she has found hope and life and a dear family. And she talks of your goodness, Lord. Today I surrender to you. I put my addictions at the foot of the cross. I lay alcoholism down. I lay drug addiction down. Lord God, my sense of loneliness and despair I'm learning can only be remedied through the rescuing power of Jesus Christ. And Lord, on this day, I surrender to you. 
And now, Father, as I do so, help me understand your love. Let me walk in your ways. And Lord, be patient with me as I begin to follow your path. But on this day, I surrender my life to the grace, compassion, and love of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.